When you think of great attacking chess players, who do you think of? Do you think of Paul Morphy? Do you think of Mikhail Tal? Well, have you ever heard of the 17th century chess player uh, Giocino Greco? Many people haven't, but he's actually one of the pioneers of that came right before the Romantic era, and he came up with a whole bunch of model games. The first true chess professional who did travel a bit, played some games, and crushed everybody very quickly. So a lot of his games are excellent for illustrating a lot of the basic opening traps that are now well known, but obviously not known at the time until he came up with them, and also came up with a lot of uh, good ways of exploiting early mistakes in the opening. So I, with that in mind, I want to jump into our games here. And game one comes to us from 1619, and it was played against no name. That means we didn't know who it was. It was 400 years ago. So we don't know who he's playing, but he does have the white pieces here. And in this first game, we're going to look at an early example of getting punished for moving that F-pawn too early. So you've all probably heard it. You don't want to move the F-pawn. But why? Let's take a look. So some Owens defense, weird move, and black plays an early mistake, pawn to f5. This does have a very dangerous idea behind it, it's not just a totally goofy move. Black is saying, if you take my pawn, this pawn is going to move, and then my bishop is going to take on g2, and if I take on g2, chances are I'm also going to take your rook, and I'm going to win this game. But remarkably, Greco did take the pawn, so what is this, some weird goof up already? Black decided to take on g2, and hopefully you can spot the winning move. At any point during this lecture, if you want to play like Greco, just pause the video and see if you can find it, and then hit play, and see if you came up with it. Here, the big hint that I will give you is it's all about this diagonal. Here's the problem with moving that f-pawn. You're weakening the h5 to e8 diagonal, and now the king becomes a target of an attack. With that in mind, it might be easy to spot white's first move, queen to h5, check, and now, after the only way to block, g6, white decides to capture. And it's all looking very good, but perhaps black had seen this and decided, I know just how to get out of this. I play the move knight f6, attacking your queen. If your queen needs to move away, you just play queen h4 or something, I'm going to snatch your rook. And that should be very good for black. So can you pause and find the absolute best move for white? There's two moves that win, but a lot of people actually struggle to play the absolute best move here. Most people, when they see this position for the very first time, they come up with the move g7 check. Because it's an excellent move. You are giving up the queen, but that doesn't matter too much because you take the rook and you make a queen, and then white is definitely winning, so you could play this way. However, just moving back to the position after knight f6, can you find the absolute best move here? Hopefully you found it by now. It's g takes h7 check, sacrificing the queen, very dramatic. And what was the point? Again, we look at this diagonal. h5 to e8, still wide open. There's a checkmate in one. Bishop to g6. An excellent move. And I love this game, and I love showing it to beginners, because not only does it highlight how you can get in a lot of trouble. You move that f-pawn. This diagonal opens wide up. But I love how the queen gets sacrificed, so the bishop can do the same job of attacking the very same diagonal here. So, wonderful stuff, and an excellent game by our boy Greco. Now, this next game I do want to show you, again, is against No Name, and now Greco has the black pieces. And this game is going to be a very interesting example of removing the defender, and it also follows up with a smothered mate. And if you don't know what a smothered mate is, the name alone should give you a little bit of hint when I ask you if you can find the checkmate in this one. And what I do find remarkable about this game, and a lot of the Greco games I saw, is that the openings in a lot of these cases do resemble professional openings you might just see today. All of this is very normal, very sensible, but now, okay, move five, a weird move, rook to e1. The idea of rook e1 is defending the e-pawn, but it is a bit weakening. When you move this rook, we do get some ideas of some potential weaknesses. When the king is castled over here, the two potential weaknesses that you might start targeting are the h-pawn, and the f-pawn. So rookie one moves the defender away. So in the future, if we ever play the move like knight g4, the knight will help attack the pawn. And we'll see this. Black decided not to go for it right away, but to castle. And after c3, queen e7, uh, d4, e takes d4, now e5, black is now ready to hop. And 
looking at it, we can now already see there's a lot of potential danger here for white. The knight here is on this. The knight is on this. And white actually blunders by taking here. Doesn't look like it could be a blunder, but it's actually a complete mistake. Can you guys see why? The hints again are we're looking at these key squares. We also would love to bring our queen in to the h4 square. The problem, of course, is this pesky knight. So the knight is keeping the queen out, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't keep the idea in mind. If at first your idea doesn't work, just look for ways to make it work. Yeah, so if you can play queen h4, black's gonna be in a lot of trouble. That being said, we take another look at this knight, and the knight is defending the d pawn. So the winning tactic here, if you can believe it, is the remarkable move, knight takes d4. So trying to remove the defender at the cost of a knight after white took back, black now played queen to h4, and white is in a tremendous amount of trouble. Look at all these puns. You're not going to be able to defend them both. He tried going back with the move knight to f3, which almost works, except for that small mate in three. So do pause your video if you don't see it right away. See if you can find it. And remember, this is one of the earliest examples of a smothered checkmate. If you don't know what that is, I will now show you. It all starts with the move. Queen takes f2, forcing the king to the corner. And now it's time to suffocate that king by sacrificing the queen. The brilliant move, queen to g1. And after the rook takes back or the knight takes back, doesn't matter which, black plays. Boom! Knight f2, check mate look how the king is smothered by his own pieces with nowhere to go so excellent excellent example of removing the defender getting an early attack and yeah smothered mate you gotta love it all right next game this is a game with a very typical opening trap so not as much drama as some of the previous ones a lot of people might know this one already but again it starts with what could be a very normal opening even today and move c3 is, in fact, the most popular move. And after knight f6, he goes in for the move d4. Not the most popular, but still a very, very playable move, even today. And now, after the weird move, bishop to b6, white should be winning already. And yeah, after here, black's whole point was he intended on taking this. But now, can you spot the very last move of the game. White played one move here, and Black had to resign. Which is also a surprising sight that they did resign even back then. But hopefully you can spot it. Again, we want to look at the weak points in the at the in the Black camp here. So Black has not castled yet, and before you castle, the weak point is this F pawn. We also want to pay attention to any loose pieces. So here, there's a knight on E4, not protected. So we can actually do a double attack, attack this knight, and uh, protect our attack this pawn on f7. And that winning move is, of course, queen to d5, which picks up a piece. Black has to get out of the mating threat. So yeah, even though f2 is hanging, if they do take, we'll have to move our king somewhere. Like say, bishop takes. We'll move our king somewhere. Not a big issue, because the knight will still be attacked. This pawn is still attacked. If they castle, we're just going to take their knight. And if they try to go here to defend against everything, yeah, we would love to be able to go here. Well, obviously, we're just going to take that knight. We could take with the bishop. We could take with our knight. Either way, we win a piece. And another interesting opening trap that happens in a lot of these types of games. So it doesn't necessarily have to happen from this exact move order. But the idea of queen d5 attacking a knight on e4 and the f-pawn does occur in quite a lot of Italians and uh, in other positions you might get in beginner games. Last game of the day. Uh, oops. I do want to go over a very popular refutation of a beginner opening. So if you've played other beginners, it's very possible that they have tried out for themselves the Damiano defense. This move, f6, again, moving that f-pawn too early actually falls into a, a winning move here for white. So you do see this in a lot of beginner games. F6 seems like a natural way to support this e-pawn, but it does in fact lose to an already very nice tactic. If you've never seen this before, what do you think white should play? Can you believe the best move here is knight takes e5? What is this? Sacrificing a knight. Again, the idea is when they take, and come on, they're gonna. I know. I know there's one expert level player in the St. Louis area who is going to tell me that this is a very tricky line. Black should, in fact, 
play queen to e7, but this also looks busted, even if white doesn't really know what they're doing. I'm just pointing it out, because I do know a guy who does this on purpose, even though he's good enough to know better. But after you move back, and they go like here, they could take also, but we're going to get all of our stuff out regardless. Even if black does get this pawn back, you're going to move this queen a bunch, and your pawn's on f6 for no reason. So, objectively, this is the way that it should be played, but come on, we know how people are going to play. They put this pawn here so that they can take back. And now, black is busted. Again, we look at this diagonal, and again the move is queen to h5, check. So, only two ways out. In the game, black played king to e7, uh, g6. This is not going to help either. In this point, we can take, look how we're attacking your rook. After black blocks, we're going to take the rook. White, black can take here, and we're either going to have to play king to d1, not a big deal, or bishop to uh, e2, after which they might take our g-pawn, and we'll play rook f1. But if you just play the move like king d1, it's true. We won't be able to castle. We did have to move our king, but we took your rook, and your knight's attacked, and potentially a rook might come to the e-file, where there's a queen and king lined up. So this is totally winning for white, which is why... Instead of g6, allowing the capture of the rook, king e7 was played, and now we're looking for very forceful moves. White is trying to get a checkmate here. So queen to e5, check, forcing the king to f7, and now, as when you're always attacking, you want to bring as many pieces in as you possibly can. So bishop to c4, check, and his opponent played king to g6, very logical, but it does run into a direct checkmate. What black actually has to do here, if you're trying to play the best possible moves, is to play the move d5. Uh, it doesn't work, like you're still totally busted, you're totally lost, but you have to give up this d-pawn and try to get this bishop to control some of these key squares, especially the f5 square. The point is now, after this capture, when the king goes to g6, we now don't have access to the f5 square with our queen due to the bishop, but yeah, we can play a remarkable tactical sequence here. We start with the move h4. This is a typical attacking idea, bringing more attackers in, this time the h-pawn. We would love to play h5, that would totally win. Black will block it, either h6 or h5, and either way, here there is an amazing tactic for white. You might not might not be able to spot this one. Now here's a tough one. Um, can you guys actually find what the best move for white is? If you think it's h5, that's an okay move, h5. King h7. That could be good too. But there's something remarkably even better than that. The remarkable move. Bishop takes b7 <laughs> on the other side of the board. You might not have been looking over there. But again, it's about this f5 square. If we could play queen to f5 without our queen being taken, we would, you know, just give checkmate. So if they do take, we're going to go here, checkmate. And yeah, if you don't take our bishop, we're going to win a rook, and therefore we're going to win. We're also still going to be attacking you. We still have a lot of vicious attacking ideas. So yeah, totally winning. I love this move. Bishop takes b7, because yeah, you're looking over here. You're looking at this guy. You sometimes forget. There's also a brilliant tactic over on that side of the board. Um, but yeah, after bishop to c4, the opponent played king to g6, which you're going to find more often than not. But the problem is... Queen to f5, they didn't get their bishop in, and after h6, many roads here lead to checkmate, but I do like the idea of playing d4, bringing a new attacker into the game, so now we're attacking with both of our bishops and our queen, and yeah, not a lot of ways out. The only real realistic way of trying to defend here is with the move g5, and again, white wants every single turn to bring more pieces into the attack. He comes up with the move h4 just threatening to take this pawn with a discovered check on the h-file. You cannot capture this pawn. There is a pin, so looking very grim. King g7 was tried. Not a lot of good alternatives. Um, one problem with king g7 is this f7 square. So you can tell, there's just too many squares that white controls. So in the game, it went king g7, queen f6, and in this position, White played. Checkmate in one. H takes g5. Checkmate. Opening up the rook. Queen covers this diagonal. Queen's covering all these important squares. Pawn is protected by the bishop. 
And yeah, truly excellent. You love when none of the pieces have moved back here and the king is getting checkmated on h6. And nothing else really would save black going back to this position. You can try to defend the f7 square. You can try like queen to e7, but this is just going to run in to not only a loss of material, but yeah, surely after this, renewing the threat on f7, you're just going to get checkmated right away. So there you go, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Hopefully you learned something, picked up a few little tricks and traps in the opening. So you can punish your opponents if they do play like an amateur at the beginning. You always want to have those moves in the back of your mind. If you did like this series, please let me know in the comments below. Hit like, hit share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys the next time I make a video. Hooray!